Uh, hello, everybody. First of all, thank you for joining us uh, for this session as well. Uh, in the previous session, we introduced you to CG Academy, but for everybody that just tuned in with us, I will just do a short recap about what is CG Academy. CG Academy is an um, all like a year-round uh, educational platform for all the young talents and future talents of the CG industry, and it's covering various uh, CG branches and industries, such as visual effects, video games, animation, video design, and etc. Uh, I have to first, first of all, I have to say all of uh, all of the professionals that come and talk uh, to those sessions are experts, and as Although our audience is young, uh, we have curious professionals that like to watch all other uh, speakers, and so it's a really big, big platform for uh, spreading the word and the network uh, in this industry. Uh, you can look, I will just remind you that you can look more into the content that we made so far on the platform, and stay tuned for the future one that will come. Uh, this year was a pretty surreal year for us, or even better said, unreal, uh, to, be more, to be more precise, an, an unreal year. Uh, first, we started uh, this 2021 uh, year with special training for university professors in Unreal Engine. They were acquiring some new skills so they can implement all the new knowledge into their cur curriculums on, in their respectful universities. So it was quite natural for us to keep on the Unreal buzz and join this uh, big summer of Unreal quest uh, during the summer. So uh, this year, a thousand professionals, this summer actually, a thousand professionals gathered today to uh, join a four week boot camp, summer of Unreal, uh, that was uh, held by and organized by Escape Studios in London. And we are very grateful that they invited us as partners for Southeast Europe. It was a, a real privilege and a unique experience for us. And along with six other VFX schools, we onboarded over 150 uh, each, and maybe even 200 uh, professionals. So it was a true privilege and a unique experience uh, for us. Uh, the thought of onboarding such a big number of, of professionals was exciting, to say at least. Uh, but probably the biggest um, success was that such a large, maybe the largest uh, initiatives, educational initiatives was such a success at the end. Uh, we had the, the final showcase of the group projects that all the professionals did. So it was, it was on point uh, of what we were uh, creating before that summer started. So many professionals and vocational lecturers joined uh, the initiative to share their skills and showcase their, showcase their uh, breakthroughs, breakthrough projects in Unreal Engine. And it wasn't too difficult uh, to invite, to get them on board. It was, it was really easy. Everyone wanted to join, which was a great thing by itself. Uh, and as you can probably guess, uh, we have a lot to say about it. So we have invited a Summer of Unreal Heroes to join us today uh, here. So first of all, I would like to invite uh, Mark Flanagan. He's from uh, Epic Games and he's a moderator of this session. Hi, Mark. Hello, can you hear me properly? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Excellent. I can hear myself there. That's great. Okay. Um, I think we have everybody here. Oh, and um, yeah, everybody's camera's working now. Um, we had some technical issues in the background there, but we're all here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody, first of all, for having us here today. And it is an absolute privilege from my perspective, and I'm very honored to actually have such a great audience and to have such a great panel. I wanted to ask you, Mark, uh, if you could share, since I gave a little scope on the, on the entire project, could you share some of your impressions? Maybe I've missed something out on some uh, Summer of Unreal uh, quest. 
Um, from my perspective, it was building on the success of a project which happened last year in the UK alone, which was um, hosted by Escape Studios, and which was um, an initiative coming out of the um, the setbacks which the visual effects industry were having due to COVID. And quite a lot of people were on furlough, which is basically paid leave. And this is a very rare opportunity in a lot of industries to actually get some retraining in. So Escape Studios and several of the larger visual effects houses in London got together and with some of the backing from us as well, we worked together to actually have a major training initiative just in the UK, which is where this has grown from. Um, last year, our focus was very much on visual effects. This year, we're trying to bring all the Unreal technology very much into the animation industry because we believe that's where it's going to have a huge impact because of various different reasons, which people here will probably tell you. But as a tool for animation companies, we honestly think this is going to be groundbreaking in a similar way to what virtual production has been um, in the visual effects industry and the film industry. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I've maybe forgot to say at the beginning, uh, the, the course was meant to gather a thousand animators across Europe. Like man, animate, animation yep. was in the, in the focus of the, of the Absolutely. Course. Very, you, very important to everybody to have um, a, a European initiative, um, especially in these days where things are slightly more fractured, bring Europe back together again. I would, um, we also invited some familiar faces as I can see, maybe even voices, because we haven't seen each other a lot during the course. But would you like to invite them over so we can hear them more? Certainly, yes. Um, I'll introduce people, but if they can give them a, if each can give a little bit of introduction to their role and where they've come from, that would be great as well. So I'll start off with um, Andrew Brassington. Andy is from uh, Escape Studios and worked incredibly hard to make this thing happen. Do you want to give yourself a little bit of a, an intro there? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Hey, okay, everyone. Uh, my name's Andrew Brassington. Um, I'm the head of talent development at Escape Studios, and um, we worked with Mark, as, as he said, on this uh, major project. So, yeah, hello. Hi, Andy. Um, next up, we're going to introduce um, Drasco, and your second name I haven't actually learned how to say yet. Um, Ivesic, would that be correct? who's CEO and animator at Adri Adriatic Animation. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yes, my name is Drashko and I'm the head of uh, Adriatic Animation Studio. We are an independent studio in Zagreb, Croatia, and we mostly do short films. Recently, we also started to do some TV series projects. Uh, and then now also we are looking more into this digital technology, which includes also Unreal. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And next up we have um, Eva Petkova, um, who's a motion capture specialist at Worldwide FX. And you actually attended the Summer of Unreal, I believe. Yes, I did. Hello, Mark. Hello, everybody. So yeah, as you said, I'm a motion capture specialist. I uh, work at actually, it's uh, Firefly Mocap. It's part of Worldwide Effects, which is New Guiana Film Studios visual effects um, studio. Uh, I did attend at the Summer of Unreal boot camp, and it was amazing. It was very useful, and we're going to use a lot of it in our production. Fantastic, thank you very much. And finally, last but not least, we have Tom Box from Blue Zoo Animation, who is, to my mind, possibly the busiest man in animation in Europe that I've ever met. He's everywhere at the one time. There is a theory there's more than one Tom Box, but I don't believe it, I think he's unique. Cheers, Mark. Um, it's lovely, lovely to be invited to participate in this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Tom, I'm co-founder of Blue Zoo Animation Studio in London, 
which is one of the biggest animation studios in the UK. I think we've got about 300 or 400 staff. I lose count when everyone's spread around. It's very hard to, um, uh, to, to keep track. But yeah, we make characterful 3D animation and we are always experimenting ways of pushing forward to make sure that we're working in the very best way possible in the most enjoyable way for all of our artists and for us uh, using tools like unreal is really pivotal in making that happen so we've really enjoyed uh, using it in the projects to date and we see a fantastic future for it so looking forward to chat about that today okay i'm going to throw out some questions um, to everybody just feel free to answer or not um, one of the things which I know an awful lot of people listening to us today would be interested in is how people got to where they are. I know it's one of the things that I always love to hear, people's personal journey. Um, and an awful lot of people here are students or just graduating. So if anybody wants to jump in and say, how did you actually get into this wonderful world of animation? I'm looking around for volunteers. Okay, I'm going to point to Tom to start with. <laughs> okay. Um, I got into it when I was about five or something. My dad bought home a BBC Micro and I just loved uh, coding and programming from a very young age. And I got kind of obsessed with being able to use the computer. But at the same time, I was loving making stop motion animations. So it was only when I got to be a teenager and I realized you can actually combine those two uh, animation and, and coding in 3D animation. Uh, so then went to university at Bournemouth to study animation and then in our final year we set up uh, Blue Zoo between a couple of friends and 20 years later it's one of the biggest animation studios in the UK. So a very brief history there. <laughs> yep, Drashko. Well if you go that far in the childhood I will remember that my first show was Muppet Show uh, and uh, the big revealing was uh, like uh, when they showed the documentary behind the scenes and then I was thinking, oh my god, you know, there are these people who are moving these puppets, uh, singing this music, playing and uh, recording this every week. I want to do that. So this is how I, since my early age, I wanted to go into entertainment and animation. Eva? Well, for me, actually, it doesn't go back to childhood. Uh, it's, it started three years ago, actually, when I happened to start working in the mock-up studio, which actually even started working overall at all, the, the studio there. So it was uh, quite a challenge because I had to start from zero. I had no idea of animation or anything and jumped into motion capture and it was an amazing journey because Actually, we had to be self-taught during this whole process. And it suddenly I see stuff like virtual production and stuff like, and stuff like that. And then comes Unreal and Mandalorian. And then your mind explodes seeing how in the future you might be able to have like in real time, one person standing, being filmed and right in front of him a creature but everything is real time and this is this is really exciting for me all the all the opportunities the real gives is really mind-blowing for me and that's why i'm so hyped awesome andy hello yeah my journey is quite um my journey is a bit topsy-turvy to be honest and it it, it, rem <laughs> it remains like that way in my book. I, I didn't start out in the industry until I was in my late 20s so I started as a runner uh, in commercials working with agencies and then I kind of worked my way through as a production assistant production coordinator got a job as a researcher for TV different TV companies and then I got a job as a development producer in, in TV and then I fell in with a bunch of guys and we set up our own studio and I became the de facto visual effects producer because I was the least talented and the only one that could use a spreadsheet and we and I was and we were a directing team as well. So that was my journey up until up until the time that I decided to get a regular job and join Escape Studios and 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 that's 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 almost 10 years ago now so yeah that's my I journey. think you're being too humble there. I think we we all realize that 
production is one of the least recognized but most important parts of our industry without whom that you know we're, we're we, we, get, we get nothing done we just sit around making pretty things and they'd never get finished um but you know th the reason why i ask you all this is because we have all come on very different journeys and that's something which a lot of people ask how can i get into this industry how do i do it i'll, I'll let you know that i started off as an architect and then I went and worked in the games industry, and then I worked in education. And my first job actually working in a visual effects company was when I was already old, very old. So, you know, <laughs> this is an industry to my mind, which is hugely inclusive. If you have talent and passion, I, I think people will get there. Um, my theory, and it seems to be bare, bare so far. Um, the thing we all have in common here today is the summer of Unreal. So let's jump in and talk a bit about that. Um, I'd love to know what people's high points are. You know, what was the thing that you liked most about the event? I know everybody has different perspectives, whether it's as um, an organizer or somebody who delivered a talk or somebody who took part in a talk. But let's just throw it open. And what to you was the most successful or important part of it? And just feel free to jump in. As an attendee, I would love to start. <laughs> I mean, this was awesome. amazing. As I thought, as I told you just a moment ago, I was self-taught. Everything, Maya, Blender, Unreal, everything self-taught. So a lot of gaps were missing about very basic stuff. And the amazing part about Summer of Unreal was that it was so well structured. Yes, it was very intense because while having the lectures, doing the project, the group project that we had to have, I was also working, so it was really, really intense, but it was amazing. And uh, Kevin Nally, his uh, lighting lessons and uh, the Niagara lessons by Joseph, they, those were amazing. I mean, all the, all the lessons were amazing, but those ones really popped out like something really special. And, if uh, anybody else would like to join the world of Unreal, I definitely would advise them to see that and try to join next summer of Unreal if there will be such one. It was amazing. Awesome. I, I think that's a really great point. An awful lot of people learn an awful lot of software themselves, but I've certainly done this. I have learned an awful lot of something, and then I've just hit one thing which is a stumbling block and it could be as simple as you need to change a tick box to make something work and you can't find it in the manual but having a, a tutor or a mentor that will actually answer that question for you you just get past that roadblock and you can fly again so yeah i, I think it's very important self-learning is important but also having access to, to great teachers helps in those times um I've go ahead can I say, uh, to me, the highest point uh, would be, uh, I mean, everything was great and, and the lectures were amazing and I really learned a lot. But what I learned the most and also enjoyed is community. Like uh, this thing which we created, uh, like strong community on Discord. Uh, so, like you said, you know, you have to tick something and it was me just to drop a question and immediately 20 other like participants are already answering you know and, and that's what i really appreciate about this which i also made me thinking like so many people were learning at the same time uh, was also really overwhelming in a good way i was even thinking why not make something like this for 10 year olds you know like uh, because the thing is this was so fantastic and playful that i would think like uh, like for the age of elementary school this would be fantastic that we have a new generation of kids who are like literate using using this kind of tools right awesome tom um, i i wanted to add that what i felt was amazing it's more it's more kind of um overall thing but i remember when andy first mentioned it to me earlier this year and he said, you know, you can get all these uh, hundreds and hundreds or a thousand people from all around Europe contributing. That sounded impossible. <laughs> I was like, wow, if they, that, that, that sounds like, that sounds brilliant. But the chance that happening is, seems unreal <laughs> for, for pun intended. <laughs> but um, then to see, to, to see those sessions actually having that many people in and, the, you know, the, the hundreds and hundreds of people involved, 
it was so superb to see because from a studio point of view when we look to hire people uh, with unreal skills it's just so so hard so seeing all of those people kind of learn their skills and 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 being able to go into the to work more tooled up uh, it's such a superb achievement i think it's it's hats off to, to you all for for managing to pull it off it's amazing Andy, feel free to jump in. Lots of praise coming your way, and well deserved. Yeah. Very well deserved. Yeah, no, it's not. It's really nice to hear, it actually, and um, it makes me smile to, to think that what was going on on the other side of the coin, if you like, we're obviously on this side of the coin organising it. Myself, Saint, obviously, uh, the rest of the team at Escape, the, the other regional teams, all of the amazing studio assistants on Discord, who were the stars of the show for me, actually because the community, the thing I, I wrote down a few points and I circled one when you're asking about what you thought was the highlight for me, it's the community and, and the way that that galvanized, I think uh, uh, most, a lot of the participants to, well, their questions were answered really quickly, which I think was really important having such a massive cohort of people. So there was a lot of studio assistants, many from Escape Studios and some from the regions as well that were there. And I'm glad to hear that they answered your questions quick. I kind of knew that anyway, but it's nice to hear it from you guys as well. And then obviously the range of classes, you know, the range of classes and the different um, topics that were introduced, it, took, it meant that there was always a lot of questions from, you know, from people because you might know one, something about one particular part of Unreal, but the other part you don't know so much about. So those guys were on their toes the whole time. And I think that sense of community is hopefully going to have some kind of um, legacy as well, I hope. So that was the highlight for me. And, and then obviously the amount of people that engaged and, retain, and were retained, you know, that came to the whole thing was was it shocked me as well tom to be honest and i also felt like maybe this is this could be impossible before we started it and so if you're asking me what the highlight of it was for me i think it was friday afternoon at five o'clock on the last day when we finished <laughs> and i just thought oh thank god so and uh, but also another highlight if 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 i'm being honest is hearing from you guys that you enjoyed it you know so that yeah there's so many great things to talk about the community the regional engagement, the cooperation, the kind of the European wide cooperation between schools who would who, who wouldn't normally do things together. I thought that was thick um, and the quality of the, the speakers, but also fin the final thing I'll say is the output of work which was really impressive. We had a showcase on the last day, didn't we? And it was like, wow, these guys have actually been working on stuff. You know, a lot of the time we, we're not entirely sure what people are doing. You're hoping that they're doing something. And then they played this stuff and it was like, wow, that's really cool, you know? So yeah, so many highlights, so many highlights. Um, I, I would agree with um, on that last day when everything had gone well, um, I thought that was amazing. Um, had confidence to start with, but still, never having had something this size happen before, it's always going to be scary. But you know, yeah. it is it is it something was... that if you try, if you, if you reach the stars, you may actually you know get to the moon. I think we got most of the way to the stars this time. Yeah, it was very scary to be honest, and there were times when it kind of waxed and waned, you know. And obviously, there were different points up until the, you know there was the, there was fear before it started if we could get people engaged and on board so partners and students and then there was the fear as we were delivering it as well but then i think by the third week when we saw that the numbers were holding we realized that something must be going right and that's where i think the community c come came into its own i th i think i think one of the the um things that I, a lot of teachers have missed during these times of um, distance learning and distance teaching and not teaching in person is that personal connection to people. And I think a lot of classes have missed that cohesion. Um, a lot of the times when I've been lecturing, or I've been teaching in schools, um, the cohort of students have been the most important part of a learning experience because they actually support each other. And I would absolutely agree that with the way in which the discord was managed and the way in which the, um, the teaching assistants and everybody else just meshed perfectly, I think that actually gave a lot of the same sense, if not even more sense, of community than people have had in animation schools and in universities previously, which is, it's an incredible achievement and I think can be something which everyone can take forward. Um, 
I'm going to change the subject slightly now back to just animation school, because I mentioned animation school or animation universities. If there was one thing that you could tell yourself now, looking back at what you've learned, what would, would be the one thing? And I'll, I'll start off with what I would say to myself. And the first thing I'd say to myself is be patient, um, because I was always impatient to learn things. But if you had one piece of advice to yourself at an earlier stage, learning these things, what do you think it might be? I'd say um, it would have been to reach out for help uh, in the sense of whether that's finding a mentor or just asking questions, because I find that uh, we're, we're, when kind of graduates and people are uh, new entrants coming to industry, they often feel like it's is wrong to ask questions because they there's an ex I think they feel there's an expectation they may they should know everything when that's not the case. So and especially in when there's more remote um, collaboration that can lead to quite a lot of anxiety when um, when you've got questions to ask and you feel like, oh, no, I can't ask this question because I think I'm I'm stupid or something. When that's not the case, you want people to ask those questions. So I'd say for me, it would be going back and making sure that I, I, I really did reach out to try and ask people how to do things and not try and act like I knew all the answers myself. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I would I would agree with that one. So I, I'll come in if that's all right. And just I just wrote yep. down, don't be afraid that you don't know how to do something. And remember, it's all a journey and you're not meant to know much at the start. And it's a horrible thing, isn't it, when you're young, that, to, to have that sort of anxiety of, of, of feeling ashamed if you don't know something. And a lot of other people around you can always seem quite confident. And um, and half, I think a lot of the time they're blagging it as well. Just just be really like humble about what you don't know and, and don't, and, and 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 don't worry about it at all and ask for help like tom said you know i really wish that i'd done that instead of either being too scared or just avoiding it or even sometimes pretending to my shame yeah <laughs> I, I think something else that um gave me a sense of perspective is seeing i was at an exhibition i think it was a dreamworks exhibition and they had a pile of paper of how many drawing um, how many drawings were actually done for storyboards for one of the films. And it was in the region of 96,000 or a hundred and something thousand drawings done. And obviously most of them are thrown away. And mm. an awful lot of people pick up an art of book and think every piece of art that the people here did was superb. And the fact of the matter is it isn't, it isn't. You see the best product all the time. Mm. And don't be hard on yourself, I think is another great thing to remember. Um, sorry, I could go on about this, but it's more about you. Um, anybody else got a, any comments about what, what you would tell your younger self? Uh, I would tell myself uh, to work hard. And, uh, you know, because now I'm learning more and more, like and I'm in my 40s, working hard pays very bad. Like, uh, and uh, if you're a student, you think uh, it's important to have fun, which is important, of course, but it's also important to understand that you're going into something big and very ambitious. Like I usually tell people, imagine how many films are done every year and only really small portion of that gets selected to festivals or picked up by platforms, you know. Uh, that means that these people who are get there to the audience, that means that they worked very hard, you know. Uh, so this is maybe advice to myself, work very hard and don't be afraid of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything, Eva, or no? Oh, pretty much the same. Just keep digging is okay. the thing. I mean, just yep. doing, searching, 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 and don't quit easily. I mean, animation, animation That's... specifically, can be really, really uh, easy to quit to make people to quit because at a certain point you get stuck and there's a plateau and you get like but no don't 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 quit that easily and just as i said keep digging it will you'll get there yep. i see that tom Again, is really agreeing with that <laughs> there have been many times in my career when i've just thought is it worth it and you know i've been a day away from going back to being an architect and then i just push through and yes it is worth it it really is I'm not saying that everybody is going to have massive success, but the one thing I know about people who are successful is they didn't quit before they were successful. So yeah, keep on going, I think is always important. Um, 
Okay, let's just jump in. We have about 15 minutes left of time to talk. So let's talk a, a bit more about where you see the future of animation industry in particular with interactive technologies like Unreal, not necessarily Unreal itself, but those kind of technologies that you're seeing at the moment. Where do you think we'll be in perhaps the next three to five years? Um, I'll, I'll start off. I think one one of the reasons we we really wanted it, we started kind of years ago embracing more um, uh, real time and GP rendering was you know immediately think oh it's yeah yeah we can get faster rendering with that but that's only just one part of it it's all about faster collaboration and faster creativity really and that allows you to get to a much better thing so i think where we're seeing it going is like with the what the kind of the capabilities of the graphics cards that are just uh, getting uh, big kind of beefier and beefier uh, all the time i think it will mean that uh, uh, in, if in five years time everyone will be kind of working in that kind of final look um mode right? not having to work with kind of proxy uh, images and uh and and trying to working without the full context of the picture because at the moment it's very kind of passing it from pipeline to pipeline and no one sees that what it actually looks like until the very end and i really think that um, we're, we're kind of inching towards that, but I think that will be leapfrogged, especially when you see, uh, you know, things like Unreal 5 and the, the, what that can do in terms of being able to work with huge data sets, and, uh, which has been quite a limiting factor to date in terms of the amount you can just fit on, fit in the kind of the scene. So I think uh, it'll be amazing to see everyone working with much more um, context and being able to see the, the final thing a lot quicker, which means you can put much more um, uh, work into tweaking it and getting something that looks even better. So I think we'll just be the, the quality of work will just be going up so much just uh, because of that that speed of being able to uh, focus on uh, perfecting it rather than just focusing on getting it to that first version. So do you think we're going to break that five or ten seconds of animation a week for most animators, or will it stay at that but being more polished? Um, I think that I, I, I think the actual craft of animating. I think there are always some uh, some speed ups that can be done. But in terms of if you're doing more keyframed animation, I don't think that will change much because it's 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 the craft that goes into uh, making those the, the keyframes and the performance. But I think what it will mean is that the keyframe animators will be able to to see what they're working in in terms of the environment while, rather than having the environment switched off because it won't load in to the to the you know computer um, and that means that they you can you can put much more into the performance because you can see the kind of like if you, you know if you could see it in the final lighting with in the final environment i think that will add much more to the performance because it allows you to to really see the full picture which means you can understand the uh the the the, the meaning and emotion and context of the scene a lot more. So I, I think it's 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 more about cranking the quality than it is cranking the the, the time it takes on a kind of like per second basis when you're actually doing that that keyframe awesome. animation. Yep. Um, I think Eva, you've got quite a lot of enthusiasm for the future of these things. Where do you think yeah. what what parts of the technology excite you most? So um, before I got into motion capturing and this field of stuff i was actually uh, mostly a second assistant camera on set uh, on shooting movies so what what concerns me about animation is mostly animation in movies and maybe feature movies that are uh, with mixed reality as i mentioned earlier i, I can really imagine having uh, pretty soon even mixed reality and uh, virtual production in one go where you can have real time uh, renderings behind behind you on on walls and everything and in the same time you can have with the mixed reality um, a creature standing right in front of the person that is being shot in the same time this would this would be really mind-blowing and it, it can we actually with metahuman it can go really crazy scary 
<laughs> some some kind because this this is going to some extremes but uh, yeah in in future movies it will be something huge and i, I see it can be really soon awesome um drashko well, well i'm just thinking about this abba you know, like they're now gonna yes. release this new concert, you know, and they're gonna be avatars and they're dancing, you know, and, and uh, what opens up, like, uh, I mean, I come from theater, so I was also doing a lot of theater, uh, and what was missing in animation is this direct response on a performance, and then you can experiment, improvise, uh, you cannot do that in animation. You have to always pre-plan, you know, everything. But if somebody would build technology, and I feel like Unreal is very near, uh, and also if they would like combine it with some either VR or like so, some some sort of tools which you can feel like you can actually go into that uh, uh, virtual reality and you can immerse in creation and the response and your because art, art is basically reaction you know we're, if we as artists we have to react on our reality and we if we have to be as you said before very patient and wait for uh, two years to see our finished product uh, little by little uh, you know things are maybe just for certain people right but but with this technology i think we can bring much much more talented uh, directors filmmakers storytellers and then in this this kind of mixture i'm really curious what this is going to bring in the future like who else is going to get into animation and who is maybe today just doing some stage shows or even uh, like uh, video games or or just live action movies you know so so when this crowd starts to kick in and make a new work this is what the future i'm looking for yeah how many people here have heard of the the idea of the metaverse which is kind of this all-encompassing um virtual world which is the meeting place of games and animation and um, other types of media and performance. And obviously, you know, coming from Epic, we've had a lot of talk from Tim Sweeney about this. And we've had events in the, um, the Fortnite world. We've had concerts. And most recently, we've had a Martin Luther King um, uh, commemoration of the I, I Have a Dream speech. Um, but how many people here think that this is something? Are, what are your views of the metaverse happening? It is certainly going to happen because it's not just Epic doing it, an awful lot of other companies. But what would your vision of this be? I think that, well, I hope animation and film and TV and all these other media will keep on going. But I think that there will be a certain amount of blending of these in a, a new media, which we think will be like a metaverse, but we don't really know what it is. So your visions would be appreciated. Um, I, th I think that what I think is exciting about a, a kind of metaverse of people coming together in 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 grand ways is when you're used, combining that with content creation rather than content consumptions. And you actually, like we saw with uh, Summer of Unreal, where a lot of people are coming together and the way that uh, these tools are going to actually allow you to virtually collaborate, um, I think is a very exciting in, in that in that sense. Um, so seeing how the metaverse can enable people across the world to come together to create stuff in real time in a, a virtual world, I think is incredibly exciting. And have you tried any of the unreal allied tools, the measure humans or the mega scans or these kind of things? Because a lot of the reason for these is to enable people who are not necessarily going to spend four or five years studying animation or art direction want to, to create and we want to be able to empower these people to create things that are beautiful compelling and meaningful to them have, have any of you tried those other tools the um, mega scans meta human creation um these kind of tools yeah we, I mean, it's covered right. a lot on, yeah. sorry go ahead sorry. go ahead go ahead then. <laughs> Okay, so so I'm using a lot of mega scans uh, in my experiments, but this also what made me thinking what you mentioned this this uh, metaverse like uh, it's it's something uh, you know like we have kids today who have to write the essay in school you know they use a pencil and uh, you know notebook maybe in future they will be using like you know metaverse 
to to express themselves because I feel like we are we are living in a in a visual age. You know, now everybody has Instagram, everybody has a YouTube account. Uh, why not instead of just using like a written word? immediately just immerse into some visual storytelling so this is what makes me excited you know and i feel like that uh, what uh, epic is doing uh, is pushing things in that direction in fantastic way you know? andy you were going to say something there i was just going to say that it's the it's the user friendliness of it i suppose on one end isn't it um what that makes it much more democratic in in that way and people who like you say, might not be able to invest the time to learn the skills to make the stuff in the first place can actually create content, which is really nice, I think. But I was going to make another point previously to that about more from an educational point of view for people that are thinking maybe about where to jump into all of this. And again, it's that idea of convergence, which has been around for a number of years now, isn't it? I, you know, think back to conferences five or six years ago when people were talking about convergence. And I thought it was really interesting um, that the studio assistants, uh, the online coordinators on the Summer of Unreal, that was, an, for, that was a, a course, as we know, for animation. They were all, apart from two people, were all game students at Escape Studios. So, you know, that, that, those lines are becoming much more blurred, aren't they? And the, the skills are interchangeable. And I think that's, that's also really interesting for... For people that might not be sure where they want to go with their career, I think there's an element of like you can go in lots of different directions and um, you can work on lots of different types of projects which can, which which overlap, which wasn't always the case a few years ago. I think you had to choose, didn't you? I'm going to go into games. I'm going to go into, mm -hmm. I'm going to go into VFX. I'm going to go into animation. And uh, I think that's quite nice. And so for any young people out there, um, obviously getting to, grips with unreal is a good start to whichever direction you go in so i think also the um when we've used like mega scans uh, and it's what and it's just amazing how how you can you can create kind of truly beautiful scenes so quickly but i think what that does especially for students is it helps them like andy was saying it helps them make stuff of very high quality very quickly but compared to traditional workflows that allows you to learn very quickly because it's all about experimenting and failing. And Unreal allows you to do, or any real-time software allows you to experiment and fail quickly to find out what works, what doesn't work. In a traditional pipeline, that takes ages of chucking stuff on, you know, render queues and, and waiting to see what it looks like. So I think that really means that it, everyone can learn so much quicker. And we found that as well when we made our, our short film and the director could try different things. I think the, we made a three minute uh, film uh, no, sorry, it's a 15 minute film. And the the day before premiere, um, Dane, the director, decided to change the, the color of the uh, coat or the texture of the coat of the main hero character throughout the entire film. And he just did that. He updated the, the te texture and then it could be rendered out. And that would never happen traditionally. You could never make such a bold thing because you. you where you'd ruin everyone's weekend for a start but um but and it's that kind of mindset where you can you can change so much so quickly and that's how you learn to become an amazing director or any other kind of artist is by experimenting and that's what really is kind of liberating with these tools for anybody who hasn't seen this film it's ada is that correct yeah it's the film you're talking about yeah it's an awesome film and a, a lot of the time when people at epic saw it for the first time they couldn't believe it was actually done using the unreal engine either so because it doesn't look traditionally CG shininess. It's um, it's beautiful style and a beautiful story told incredibly well. Which obviously story is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing of everything we do. Um, I think we have Boyana here who possibly has questions for us from the audience. The audience, if there's any question, please raise your and also thank you for uh, sharing your experience. If anyone has a question about animation in Unreal Engine, this is the right group of people to ask. Are we shy? We're, maybe we're a bit shy here. So maybe um, since we don't have uh, questions now in the audience, maybe you can guys share a little bit further. I, I mean, Eva, Drashko, um, and Tom, uh, if you can share your 
insight on using all those tools in Unreal Engine? What was your learning base? Did you have any previous knowledge and how fast were you able to keep up with the, it was an intensive boot camp, I can say. So if you could just share a bit and encourage people to, to maybe get into it. If not, any other questions here? One other thing I'll just jump in and let people know, by the way, before um, Tom and Eva and Drashko actually answer this. Um, a very important thing about the democratization process is that these tools are free. Um, this is something which, when we started, well, certainly when I started learning 3D animation, the tools were incredibly expensive, and even to get a computer in which any of these programs would run on was a, a very difficult thing. These days, it is incredibly democratized, so you can use Blender, and you can use Unreal, you can use MetaHuman, you can use all these things for free, and use them commercially for free, with the exception of in the video games industry. So if you're making animation um, in your company, it is still free to use these tools. So it's a great pipeline to, to get a little bit of sales here, but I, I think it, it makes sense to people to realize that setting up a company is very expensive, but if you're using um, the not just Unreal tools, but the tools from Blender and other community-based projects, you can compete with the, the big players in, in Hollywood without having to spend that money. But I'll, I'll just, if you have uh, come up with answers to that question from, um, the use I'll, of the, the tools, uh, yep, go for it. I was, I was gonna say what's, what's kind of surprised me about it was it's just how fun it is. Because when you kind of get into production using traditional tools, it's, it is cumbersome and slow and it's slow to see results. I think it really does bring that, that fun back into seeing just just playing around with stuff and not not having to figure out take ages to figure out what every single dial does or or every single variable and then waiting ages to see what 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 that means uh so for me it's just uh it's just fun to play with for a start and that's been a while since that's that's been the case with the technology i've, I've jumped in and played with measure humans for hours on end for no obvious reason apart from the fact that it's awesome anybody else play with measure humans has anyone played in the audience with MetaHumans? We have three and keep on rising. Four. <laughs> Do you have any question about MetaHumans? Maybe Mark, uh, Drashko, Eva, Tom, and Andy can answer. They, they don't have, everything is clear. I think MetaHuman is that in intuitive. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go, Jasper. Well, I mean, there are some things which are not very clear for me for metahumans, but I guess I will probably have to discover this myself. But but I wonder, wanted to add uh, on uh, what was the thing uh, which you mentioned, Bojana, uh, like uh, what changed for me was, uh, as uh, Tom said, like uh, it was so easy to use. I was really even sometimes freaking out. I couldn't believe how easy it is. I was thinking like, okay, this is a joke because I come from Houdini, I'm using Houdini and Houdini is not so easy, you know, so it takes some time like to, to understand and to learn it. Uh, so I was all the time thinking I'm doing something wrong because it just couldn't that it's so easy to make something like this. Uh, so that was one thing. So I feel like uh, it's going to be very easy for a lot of filmmakers to learn these tools in very short time because when this course started, uh, I had almost zero experience, like in Unreal. I opened it a couple of times, and when the course started, like already after three days, okay, you know, everything is clear, you know. And then, like just little by little, I was learning how they scoped, you know, through the curriculum. But I can say, already after three days, I was able to make my stuff, and start to build my project. Uh, uh, that's how fast it is. Thank you, Trashko. I don't, I'm not sure if people understand what it means to have a thousand students in, at the same time uh, listening. And we, uh, I'll just say from the experience of the organization, we were really ready for a pandemonium for the first few days. But I have to say all the, all the attendees were super professional and 
they had understanding uh, and patience for everything. So I would just say thank you to you for not losing your mind uh, for every question and thank you uh, for cooperating with us. I think it's if a wonderful thing that the internet can do for us is bring us together. And I think um, there, there's a thing called the wisdom of the crowd, which is if you get a large enough number of people, they start to behave almost like a super brain um, and can make decisions which are much better than individual people do on their own. Um, and I think that that's kind of what these online communities can do. And becoming part of an online art community is really effective. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, I would just like, uh, we're about to end this session, Mark, but at the end, I would just like to invite everyone to explore uh, hashtag Summer of Unreal on various social platforms. Uh, you will see some group projects that uh, students did, and it's, they're quite amazing. We didn't expect them to be that, that good and that funny and that advanced. So just hashtag Summer of Unreal on LinkedIn and some other platforms, and you can check it out. Well, thank you all, Mark and everyone else, Yashko, Eva, Tom, and uh, Andy. Uh, after this, stay tuned, we have Clement. He's also a superhero from Summer of Unreal. So guys, stay tuned. Thank you all. Thank Bye. you. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.